What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion 2020 tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out one of my favorite features inside of Twin Motion 2020, the ability to scatter objects based on surfaces. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, we're gonna import an example model from the SketchUp 3D warehouse. So this model is the Motor Museum by Bob M. And I've gone through and made some adjustments to this so that it aligns a little bit better with what Twin Motion needs. So I like grouped all of the uh, the ground materials into their own group. I also got rid of some of the SketchUp models because we're gonna replace them with Twin Motion models. But you can go into the 3D warehouse and download this model and follow along. So to start off, I'm just gonna import this as a file. So I'm just gonna go into Twin Motion, click on import, and I'm gonna find my file. So in this situation, it's the Motor Museum. We're gonna bring it in. One thing I wanna note though is I don't want to collapse this by material. So collapsing by material is going to take your model organization and collapse it solely based on the materials that have been applied to faces. I don't like doing this because it takes away your ability to scatter things based on groups that you set up inside of SketchUp. So instead, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna click on Keep Hierarchy. I'm gonna go ahead and click Fix UV and Texture and I'm gonna click on OK. All right, and so once you bring this in, I would recommend going in and saving your model so that you can work from it. So just doing a file, save, just in case anything goes wrong with it or anything like that, you can uh, maintain your changes. All right, and so there were a number of different features added inside of Twin Motion 2020, but in this video in particular, I wanna focus on the um, the vegetation scatter tool. And so what the vegetation scatter tool is, is it's a tool that was added because previously, the way that you would add vegetation is you would paint it, right? So you would drag a model into the vegetation paint tool, and then you would click and drag, and this would automatically add trees in here. So you can see how I'm able to add trees based on where I click and drag this, which is fine, but the problem with that is you had to come in here and paint all of these trees in here manually, which could get really kind of frustrating um, because you couldn't add things really quickly. However, in the new version, what they've done is they've added a vegetation scatter tool. Well, the vegetation scatter tool is designed to help you scatter things just by clicking on a surface. So for example, let's say I wanted to add some trees in the background. So if I wanted like a forest in the background or something like that. Notice I have placed these in here as separate groups, but let's say that we wanted to bring this birch tree in, maybe the pecan tree, and we'll go ahead and go with the gray birch for right now. So let's say that we wanted to place a number of those trees on this hill back here. Well, you can see how with the vegetation scatter tool selected, we now have options in here for scatter add, scatter remove, and vegetation eraser. We'll notice that right now these are grayed out. However, if I was to click on a tree, all of a sudden I get options in here for scatter add and scatter remove. Well now, if I click on scatter add and then click on a surface, you can see how this is gonna scatter trees in here based on the surface I have selected. And within my SketchUp model, what I did is I took this particular hill right here and I made it into a group. So notice this is only getting spread across this group and nowhere else. I made this hill a different group. So let's say over here, we wanted a collection of these different trees. Well, I could select by doing a shift click, multiple trees, and then click on this surface. And notice what this is doing is this is just randomly scattering those trees based on where I click. So this is a really fast way to add trees to a surface. So now all of a sudden I don't have to come in here and paint all of these in manually, which can be really kind of a painful process. Instead, all I have to do is click on the surface. And this will work not only for trees, but for other things as well. So let's say for example, I wanted to add some bushes. So a lot of the trees and plants and stuff that they added, they've actually like totally revamped this library. Notice there's a lot more detail on these, um, on these different plants than what we had in here before. But let's say for example that I wanted to take a couple of these bushes and spread them across these faces as well. Well I could just come in here and do a shift click to select them both and then just use scatter add to add bushes to this face. So you can see I can add undergrowth to this as well. And as we zoom in, notice that these are highly detailed. Um, they're actually reflecting the light and everything else as well. So when you start adding your trees and forests and other things like that using this tool, suddenly you can create very detailed objects really quickly. 
And so another thing I really like about this is not only does this work for things like bushes and trees and rocks, you can also use it to spread grass. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to add a lawn to these objects right here. And note again that I've grouped them separately, but I could use this to add a lawn to this object. So if I click on lawn and then click the plus, you can see how what this is going to do is this is actually going to scatter grass geometry along this face. So I can actually use this to add grass to these larger areas really quickly, where previously I couldn't necessarily do that. You had to kind of paint them in. But notice this whole face now has this grass applied to it. And you could use maybe a longer grass or something like that if you wanted to. Like let's say you wanted this to be more of a wild grass in the back. You could use this in order to add more of a wild grass to this face. So you can see how really quickly you can suddenly add grass in here. And this looks even better if you couple it with a uh, material. So for example, if I was to sample this face and then look at my ground materials, maybe for this one I would want something that's a little bit browner or that matches my grass a little bit better. But then when we render this out, especially from a viewpoint like this one, that grass is going to match my ground material and it's going to look really realistic. So now you can add grass to surfaces with this tool. And sometimes your grass kind of overlaps like this one. You don't necessarily want that. Well, they've also given us an erase tool. So I can actually come in here with the erase tool and if anything's overlapping, I can use this tool in order to erase it out. So not only can you add this, you can also kind of fine adjust the stuff that's added by using the erase tool that's built in. And so this is really good for adding precision type objects as well. So let's say for example that I wanted some shorter trees running next to this uh, next to this road. Well, I could just find some shorter trees in my list. We'll go ahead and call it an apple tree for right now. But I could select that and I could place this along this road. And notice how it'll place these just along the surface that we have selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase these back out. But I wanna point out that within the settings of this tool, so if I wanted to add something along this road like this, So when you first drag an object in, so like say, exa for example, I dragged an apricot tree over here, you can click on your settings and you can adjust the age and the growth and the different settings of those trees before you scatter them in. So for example, let's say I wanted these to be shorter, I could set my age to like 20% and then I could scatter these in and you can see how I get kind of younger trees. Where on the other hand, if I was to drag another tree in, so let's say maybe this big pine tree, if I was to drag that in and I was to set the age to 100%, then when I, when I scatter this along a surface like this, you can see how I get the much taller trees. So you can set the growth of the objects before you set them in here. And one thing to point out is inside of your weather conditions, you can also adjust the growth of your trees. So you can see how anything that had the growth set to on, you can now use this to set how developed things like your forests are. So you can see how everything is kind of adjusting. Or if you had turned the growth off when you initially scattered this in here, then the ones that had that turned off wouldn't have that setting applied to them. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to remove these trees because I don't necessarily want those out here. And then one more thing, I'm just going to add a forested patch along this group right here. And again, note that I've grouped this geometry. So now when I place these in here, it's only going to place them inside of that group. So you can add forested areas like this really quickly.
So that should give you a pretty good idea of how you can scatter different things inside of your models using the vegetation scatter tool that was added in Twinmotion 2020. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. What do you think about this feature, about the release in general? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.